Let's demonstrate a shoulder examination. Now, this is going to be broken down into a few parts. First off, visual inspection, then active ranges of motion, and finally some orthopedic testing. So to start out, you're going to observe your patients. We're going to have Ritzy just face me here for a sec. So we're looking at the overall muscle mass. We're checking bony landmarks and making sure there's no asymmetries or abnormalities. You're going to look at the patient head on and then have them turn to the side so you can face this way, Ritzy. Once again, you're going to do a visual inspection and then have you uh, face away from me. And I'm just going to move your hair to the side if that's okay. And then once again, you're looking for symmetry, you're palpating bony landmarks, and making sure everything looks nice and balanced. Okay. And now I'll have you face me. And so the next part would be active ranges of motion. So just copy my movements. So first off, you're going to bring both arms straight up as far as you can. So this is known as flexion. Okay, good. And now bring them back down slowly. Good. Okay, next one is going from the side straight up as far as you can. So this is abduction. Okay, good, good. And further up as far as you can. Nice. Okay, and then bring them back down nice and slow. Okay, perfect. Now, we're going to do external rotation. So you're going to bend your elbows about 90 degrees, palms up. I want you to turn out as far as you can. Okay, good. Nice. And then come back in slowly. Perfect. And now on this one, I want you to um, face this way for a sec. Actually, maybe face towards the chair so the camera can, can see better. So you're going to bring your arms to your side, and I want you to bring both arms as far back, keeping them straight as you can. So now, yeah, so bring them back, and you're going to bring, oh, I'll show you. You're bringing them back this way. So that's what you're going to do, okay? So once again, from your side, so bring them back, and this is known as extension. Good. Okay. And then bring them back to your side. And now for this next one, I'll have you face away here for a sec towards the uh, cabinet so the camera can see this. I'm going to come over here so you can see what I'm doing, Mitzi. I want you to bring your arm as far back as you can like that with your thumb up, okay? And we're going to do both sides so we can compare the two. Okay, so yeah, so pick an arm and then bring it back into that position. There you go. Okay, good. Nice. So this would be internal rotation. Okay. Great. Okay, and then bring them back down. Okay, and then you can face me as well. So one thing I should mention though is before you start with the shoulder examination, you want to make sure that you've ruled out the cervical spine because certain pathologies can present as shoulder pain. So prior to starting with the shoulder examination, make sure you conduct a thorough cervical examination to make sure there's no cervical pathology. In the next section, we're going to go over the rotator cuff and some specific orthopedic tests to diagnose pathology. But before we start, I'd like to review a bit of the anatomy. So when we're palpating the back of the shoulder, specifically the shoulder blade area, we're going to find the spine of the scapula. And this acts as a small border between the structures. So we know that up here would be your supraspinatus with the tendon coming through and attaching up onto the humerus here. Below the spine here of the scapula, we have the infraspinatus and the teres minor, and these are your external rotators. And if I turn the skeleton around here, uh, right in here, where you see this painted area on the front side of the scapula, would be the subscapularis. So those are the primary muscles involved and the ones that make up the rotator cuff. So now we're going to demonstrate some orthopedic tests. First off, we're going to test the supraspinatus with the full cam test. So you're going to bring your arm out, Ritzy, to about 90 degrees in flexion, slightly out, about 30 degrees. I want you to point the thumb up as if you're kind of holding a can here. I'm going to push down and I want you to resist this movement, okay? okay. At the same time, this hand will be here to palpate the rotator cuff and more the supraspinatus. Okay, so resist. Good. Okay, good. And now bring the arm down. Second test for the supraspinatus would be the empty can. So almost identical to this first test, except we're going to change position of the hand. So you're going to bring this up once again, and this time pretend like you're emptying a can. So you're going to turn it perfect. Keep the thumb pointing down. Same idea. You're going to resist, okay? There we go. Good. Okay. So as we can see, it, Ritzy's quite strong, and she's not suffering from any shoulder pathology. Now, in clinic, a lot of the time what we'll see, if, if this... If there wasn't a problem with the supraspinatus or some type of strain here in this rotator cuff, as I would push down, you'd probably see the arm dip down slightly and the patient would complain of pain or weakness in the shoulder. 
Um, another thing that we've come to see in clinic quite often is that an anterior posture where the head and the shoulders are forward can actually create a, a situation where this test might actually seem positive for a rotator cuff pathology, but the minute we correct the patient's posture, so if we were to bring the shoulders back and tuck the chin back a little, we would test this and we would actually see it as being a negative test. So it's just something to think about when you're examining your patients. Next, we'll be performing a test for the external rotators of the rotator cuff, the infraspinatus and the teres minor. And for that, we're gonna have you bend your elbow, palm up, and I want you to bring the arm out into external rotation as far as you can. Perfect. Now, I'm going to try to push you back in. I want you to resist by pushing out, okay? So here we go, now resist, good. Okay, good, no, nice and strong. And now we're gonna do the internal rotators. We're testing those. So that would be the subscapularis muscle. I want you to turn here so you can kind of face away so the camera can see the back here. We're gonna bring the arm back with the palm facing towards me like this, perfect. And you're gonna to try to hold this position, okay? So hold this position, I'm gonna let go now. Okay, and actually let's straighten this wrist out like that. Okay, so hold it there. So what I'm observing for here is to see whether Ritzy's hand migrates slowly towards her low back. Now if that happens, that's a lag sign. So that could be indicative of a problem here. We're also gonna test the strength of the subscapularis. So I want you to bring the arm out a bit. I'm gonna push against your hand and I want you to push back, okay? So push, good, no, nice and strong. Okay, great. Now let's run through some orthopedic tests for shoulder impingement. Before starting, you wanna palpate the anterior joint line here, the shoulder. And actually, Ritzy was already in position and that was really good because bringing the patient's arm behind them like that into internal rotation will actually help you palpate underneath that uh, subacromial space better. Okay, so once you've palpated, assess for any pain or crepitus or any visual defects that you can see, we're gonna go through the orthopedic tests. So the first one we've already done, which is the empty cam test. So we're gonna bring the arm into a forward position again, thumb up, out by about 30 degrees. And so we're gonna turn you down. So this is the empty cam test, right? And once again, I'm going to push down and you resist. Okay, good. So the reason we use that one is by creating that internal rotation, it's gonna close down the space in the shoulder. And if there's any impingement, it'll usually assess it much better than say a full cam. Now, second one is called Mears impingement test. So this is a passive test. So the patient doesn't have to move. You're gonna do that for the patient. You're gonna point the thumb up like that and actually just relax the hand, perfect. And I'm gonna bring your arm up as far as I can, okay? Into flexion. I'm gonna palpate the joint space here. And as we bring this up, we're looking for any limitations in range of motion, any pain, crepitus. There we go, good. And right at the end range there, we're gonna bring it into maximum flexion. Good, okay. So that was Nier's test. And then the last one is called the Hawkins-Kennedy test. So this test, you're basically going to bring the arm out into abduction. You're gonna stabilize the patient's arm with one hand, and you're gonna use your other hand to create movement. And what I'm looking for is I'm gonna create internal rotation, but at the same time, horizontal adduction. So I'll demonstrate. So you just relax the arm, you don't have to do anything. So we're bringing it like this. Good, forward a bit, good, further, and good, perfect, okay. Now this is a test that we perform to observe, to see if there's any scapular asymmetries in terms of movement or any winging of the scapula. And it's primarily testing the serratus anterior muscle, which is not a rotator cuff muscle, but is a key stabilizer of the uh, scapula. So we've got Ritzy here. She's basically gonna perform a push-up in a standing position. So I want you to go close to the door now, bend the elbows, okay. And as Ritzy pushes back, I'm gonna observe her scapulae and I'm gonna to assess to see if there's any winging. So now push away from the door, perfect. Okay, and get in there and palpate. And then we wanna compare the two sides. Okay, good, and just do one more. So you can go back, okay. And now push away again. And one thing to note is that asymmetries in scapular movement are actually very common in impingement type problems of the shoulder. Great. Now we're gonna perform two orthopedic tests to examine the patient for a biceps tendinopathy. So the first one is called SPEEDS test. So basically, Ritzy, you're gonna 
bring your hands into this position. I want you to perform flexion. You're going to bring your arm up like that, okay? okay? As you do that, I'm going to resist, okay? So bring the arm up into flexion. So as Ritzy's doing that, I'm going to be palpating the biceps tendon. But what I want you to do, Ritzy, actually is rather than just movement here, I want you to perform it with the whole arm. Because the biceps tendon, there's an attachment site here, but there's also the two tendons up the top. Okay. Okay? So once again, so you're going to bring the arm into flexion. There you go, let me resist, good. Okay, perfect, nice, and relax. So that's Speed's test. And now the next one is called Jurgensen's test. So this one tests supination, which is another action performed by the biceps. So you're gonna bring the arm into this position, and supination is the turning of the palm up like that, okay? So I'm going to hold your hand, and I want you to turn out this way, but I'm gonna resist that movement, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna stabilize you here. Okay, now turn outwards, good. And I'm gonna palpate the biceps tendon here as well as higher up, okay? Good, and relax, perfect. So next, let's take a look at frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis. Now the way we go about assessing a frozen shoulder would be, first off, we'd observe the patient. So Ritzy, you can face me for a sec there. And we basically have them uh, attempt to go through all the ranges of motion. Now, one thing I should note is that often patients will come into the clinic and they've already gone on Google and they're like, ah, I know what I have. And they'll tell me, I have frozen shoulder. And the first thing I'll ask them to do is, can you raise your arms up like this? And the minute they show me that they actually have a decent range of motion, I'll tell them, sorry, but you don't have frozen shoulder. You will observe extra, oh, you can bring your arms down now. Yeah. <laughs> In frozen shoulder, I mean, there will be marked limited ranges of motion, both, both passively and as well as actively. One of the first things that we'll notice in active range of motion to be limited is actually external rotation. So for that one, I'll have uh, Ritzy put your elbows like that, palms up. So this is the one where you turn out like that again. So this is something we'd observe and often, more often than not in a frozen shoulder, you'll actually see a change here quite uh, early on. Uh, another thing that we do is have you turn around here so I can look at your shoulders. You can relax the arms again. I'm just gonna move your hair out of the way is you want to look at the scapulae again, and you want to observe ranges of motion because often you will see asymmetries and changes in movement here that are secondary to the uh, range of motion decreases in the shoulder or the uh, glenohumeral joint. So once again, you're gonna observe here. Another thing to note is when you're palpating all the surrounding musculature, often patients with adhesive capsulitis will have trigger points and restrictions throughout the entire uh, uh, fascial chain here, trapezius, rhomboids, deltoids, everywhere you look, it's not uncommon to find those restrictions. And uh, that's usually secondary to that restricted movement here because a patient will try to move their arm up and you'll often see in a patient with frozen shoulder that rather than moving because they can't, they start to hike up the shoulder. And that's using all the other accessory muscles in the region. So that's basically how we'd go about assessing a patient with adhesive capsulitis. Now we're gonna discuss the pathologies of the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint. So the first thing when assessing this is we're gonna visually look at the patient and see if there's maybe a step-off deformity. We're going to palpate the joint. And actually, Ritzy, I'm gonna have you kind of move your shoulder up and down like that. Perfect, now move it a few times. So up and down, good. And what I'm feeling for here is any crepitus or any pain. Okay, good. And then you can also do this passively a little bit. So you just got, you know, you're palpating the joint, kind of move the shoulder around. Good, no, I can feel it there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is called the scarf's test. So you're going to bring your arm into this position, okay? And while you're in this position, I'm going to force it further or push it into more of a horizontal adduction. And at the same time, I'm gonna assess the joint here. So you don't have to do anything. Just hold this position, okay. Now we're moving this across and I'm going to bring it over. And once again, I'm assessing for any crepitus, any pain or, you know, too much movement in some cases if there's significant ligament damage. Okay, good. Doing okay? Nice. Okay. And now we're going to just basically assess a range of motion. So abduction, that's where you bring your arm all the way up. And uh, what we're looking for is a painful arc. So uh, usually in an AC pathology, there should be some discomfort between about 150 to 180 degrees. So those last 30 degrees. Okay, so I want you to bring the arm up like this as far as you can. Okay, good. Now try this side. Okay, 
There you go. Perfect. Good. Okay, so what I would do is I would get in, palpate the joint. I come this way so I don't block it so you can see it. And I would probably passively bring this up and down through those last 30 degrees just to make sure we're assessing it properly. There we go. Good. Okay. Good job, Ritzy. So that's a great way to assess the AC joint. Now let's assess for shoulder instability. We're going to look at this in, in a couple of different ways. First off, we're going to look for a sulcus sign. So that's basically a sulcus or a small indentation that'll form in the lateral deltoid. So what we do is we gently hold the patient's arm and we're going to perform a traction straight down like this. And if there's any laxity in the joint as the humerus moves down, it'll actually form a little depression in the shoulder. So once again, just kind of pulling down. Good. Okay. And for this next part, uh, we're going to switch positions. So now I've switched over to this side. Uh, we're going to use the other shoulder because it'll be better angle for the camera to observe what we're doing. The first test is called an apprehension test. So we're going to put the arm into external rotation. I'm going to put the other hand almost in a fist like uh, form underneath the shoulder here. So it's going to be like a little fulcrum. Okay. And as I externally rotate your shoulder, what I'm looking for is for the patient to, to resist or want me to stop. They're going to show apprehension because if there's too much laxity in the shoulder, it's going to mimic a dislocation. So if we get a positive apprehension, then what we want to do is relocate the humerus. So we're going to put pressure from anterior to posterior, and we're going to perform the external rotation again. And by stabilizing the shoulder, this should be more comfortable for the patient and they'd probably say, oh yeah, no, this feels fine. You can go even further. So that would be a relocation test. So those are three great ways to assess for shoulder instability. So now let's take a look at some orthopedic tests for labral tears, or also known as slap lesions. So first off, it's a test we've seen already in this video, which is the um, speeds test. So basically you're starting here, and this is where you're gonna bring the arm into flexion, Ritzy and I'm going to resist, okay? So this is a test that we performed uh, when we were assessing for biceps tendinopathy. The reason we're using it now is because the biceps tendon attaches into the superior aspect of the labrum. So we're testing for any injuries there. Okay, so now you're gonna bring the arm into flexion and I'm gonna resist your movement, okay? So go, good. And once again, you're assessing for any pain or weakness. Good, okay, perfect. Now, the second test is known as O'Brien's test. For this one, we're bringing your arm into about 90 degrees of flexion. We're gonna go into horizontal abduction. Perfect. I want you to hold this position. I'm gonna push down and I want you to resist, okay? And once again, we're assessing for any pain or weakness. There we go. Good. Okay, perfect. Now, the last one is known as the Cranks test. So we're gonna take the arm into various uh, uh, movements, primarily internal, external rotation, and we're assessing for any pain, crepitus, or even clunking that might be going on in the shoulder due to a labral tear. Okay, so we're bringing you into this position, so you don't have to do anything, I'm gonna guide you, and we're gonna go into um, some internal, external rotation at various angles. Good. And you might even wanna bring it down a bit and bring it into more abduction, and you're just testing movement and, and stressing the labrum at different angles. Okay, and that is a Cranks test. So, three great tests for assessing labral uh, problems, tears or slap lesions as we call them. Uh, overall, this is a great video that you should use as a resource. High clouds drifting away, leaving the shadows under. Step out of the maze, follow the path and